The ultimate roast potato is crispy, crunchy, and golden on the outside, fluffy through the center. And I thought I knew the best way to do that until I made this video. There's gonna be a lot of potatoes harmed in this episode. If I eat another potato, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Been doing it wrong my whole life. So there are quite a few things to test out here to figure out how we make the best roast potato. First of all, I wanna test out, does it make a difference if you actually parboil the potatoes or just literally bung them in the oven? Number two, I wanna figure out what is the best kind of potato. Number three, I wanna look at which is the best fat for roasting. And number four, and this is a bit of a wild card, should you be adding bicarb soda to your roast potatoes? First of all, I've got an array here, and these are kind of potatoes that are quite common in most supermarkets. We have Desiree, Dutch cream, which are very similar, also known as Yukon Golds. I have Kestrel, and I have Sabago. Sabago, Sabago, <laughs> wait, Sabago. <laughs> which I believe is very similar to the russet potato if you're in the US. Okay, so what are all these potatoes? I actually wrote some notes. <laughs> I didn't want to get it wrong because types of potatoes can be waxy or floury, high moisture, low sugar, high sugar. All of these things are going to affect the roasting suitability. So Desiree, red skin, waxy, high moisture, and a little floury. Dutch creams, medium starch, high sugar. Kestrel is waxy, high starch. Sebago is high starch, low sugar. So for this first test, parboil versus just straight in the oven, I'm gonna use my Sebago potato. It's one of the most common potatoes, so we'll start there. And let's test out whether parboiling really makes a difference. For the plain roast potatoes, it's just a drizzle of olive oil and then onto the baking tray. For the parboiled potatoes, I want to cook my chunks of potato in boiling water for around about 10 to 15 minutes or until a knife pierces through and everything seems kind of soft and tender but not so soft that everything breaks apart. Both of these potatoes get roasted at 200 Celsius until they're crispy and golden around about 50 minutes. They're both looking golden but which one has the upper hand on the crunch? They both sound quite crunchy. I think we've got to get in here and have a look. Definite crunch sound difference. And also, if you have a look here, the parboiled one is really soft and fluffy in the center there, whereas this guy still kind of like firm and crumbly. I'm going to eat this one to give it a taste test, but I think I already know which one I prefer. I've got crunch, I've got fluffy potato. Let me try this one. No crunch really at all. It is cooked through more than I would have thought, but for sure, parboiling makes a massive difference. So now that we know parboiling is the way to go, I have already parboiled, oiled, and salted each of these types of potatoes. Now we just need to figure out which one is the best. Let's roast these guys. Oh wait, I should take the paper off. <laughs> the most will have roasted paper. <laughs> Delicious. Look at these. A potato really isn't just a potato. They all look completely different. So here we have Dutch cream, Sebago, Desiree, Kestrel. Okay, Dutch cream first. That's a nice sound. I love that kind of like potato skin ring around the outside. All right, let's go over here. That's a pretty nice crunch on the Sebago. Ooh, I like how fluffy that is on the inside. Desiree, not quite as crunchy, I'd say. This is probably the worst for me. I mean, I haven't even, cr it, there's, there's no ping ping sound there. Well, let's taste it, but it's not looking very good for that one. All right. The crunch is nice. It's lovely and creamy and soft and the flavor is good. Like it tastes like a deeply savory potatoey flavor. Sebago. Crunch is good, but I feel like after eating the Dutch cream, the middle of it tastes almost a little bit watery. It's not quite as complex and like really rich. Desiree. Weird. It looked promising, but it just tastes really powdery and really flowery. It's like the powdery flowery is turning into glue in my mouth. Looks can be deceiving. I thought that one was gonna be a goer. Let's try the Kestrel. 
The crunch is not bad. The flavor is better than the Desiree, in my opinion. But it doesn't have the same lovely creaminess as the Dutch cream. And to me, it just looks a bit weird and powdery on the outside. I think there's a pretty clear winner for me. If I was gonna go for like the best roast potato, I'm choosing Dutch cream. If I'm like, well, I want like an all rounder, probably the Sebago as a good mashing potato would be good to have in your pantry because it's done fairly well as a roasting potato, but we don't want fairly well today. We want the best. We're going Dutch cream. Now, one of the final pieces in the puzzle I think is fats. So I've taken four of the most common kind of roasting potato fats. I've got lard, I've got butter, duck fat and olive oil. We chose the Dutch creams. I have already parboiled these, so they're good to go. Now we just need to mix fats and roast. For this test, I've actually preheated my trays so that the solid fats will melt immediately so we can coat the potatoes. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, toss the potatoes, and then these potatoes are ready to roast. I'm gonna roast each of these potatoes at 200 Celsius for around about 50 minutes or again until they're golden and cooked through. So here we are with the results. Everything is golden and let me just check the sound here. Crispiness factor, sounds good on all four. I think this is gonna come down to flavor. So I'm gonna go with olive oil first of all. Probably not as crunchy as I was expecting it to be. Flavor is nice though, lovely crust, it's pretty good. Let's go with butter. More crunchier. That extra butter flavor is very good. I mean, who doesn't like butter? Let's have a look at lard. Good crunch. The lard does give it a nice savory flavor, certainly more flavor than the olive oil. Okay, duck fat. To me, it doesn't have a dis as distinctive a flavor as I thought it was. Like in my mind, oh yeah, duck fat potatoes are the best. I guess because the French are so good at saying duck fat potatoes are the best, but I don't know. I think it's lacking a bit of character when you try it against the lard and the butter. Hayley, you're gonna come try this. I'm sorry, I can't decide. <laughs> Hayley is a lard, you're, you're a lard roast, potato roaster, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, at the beginning of the day, I was like, Hayley, you are wrong. Duck fat is going to win. It's this because of the crispiness and then the carry through pork flavor is what makes it win. You know, I hate to say it. I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so decision time. I think I'm trying to get over my own prejudice of duck fat being superior, but I gotta give it to the lard. The flavor is there, it makes it more savory. It's more interesting to have that kind of like slightly roast porky flavor at the end. It's not over the top, but it's certainly an extra flavor that you like, and it's probably the crunchiest out of the four. Duck fat, Desiree potatoes, I've been doing it wrong my whole life. Damn. <laughs> I feel like we've now cooked a million potatoes and we've come up with like a really good result, but I have one little like wild card thing here. And that is that I saw on a website, Serious Eats, when I was doing like all my research, that they used bicarb soda to cook the potatoes before they're roasted. Now the idea here is that the bicarb soda, also known as baking soda, will make the water alkaline, which actually will help to break down the outside of the potato more quickly and actually make that sort of outside more fluffy. I'm sure there is like more technical stuff and sciencey stuff involved there, but that was my takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the website, they did say it was about half a teaspoon per two quarts of water. I've worked that out to be about four teaspoons per two litres, which I believe is almost correct. Did you enjoy that explanation, Dax? I love it. I'm all about it. <laughs> I love Marion Does Maths. <laughs> Should we do a series? Marion Does Maths or doesn't do maths. <laughs> Wait, no, I don't need to put bicarb in that one because I need one bicarb, one not bicarb. Marion can't do maths or basic science experiments. <laughs> For this last test, I need four teaspoons of bicarb soda dissolved into two liters of water and then cook my potatoes until they're just soft and tender. For my control test potatoes, I'm gonna put those into plain boiling water and again, cook them until tender. Both of these potatoes get tossed in some lard because that's the fat that we think is the best and then sprinkled with a little bit of salt and then roasted until golden. 
Immediately I can see that we have a lot darker color on our bicarb soda potatoes. I feel like the crunch is kind of like pretty similar for both. I wonder if there's been an effect on the flavor though, because that's what I kind of worry about the bicarb, that there might be an extra like not so nice flavor, but let's have a go. So these are my non-bicarb cooked potatoes. Delicious, good, crunchy, bicarb. It's like the layer underneath the crispiness. So I'm assuming sort of like part of that layer that would have soaked up some of the bicarb is like a little bit slimy. It's really marginal. And I think so marginal that I'm not sure that I would recommend like an extra step. And I'm not so sure that I like that slightly slimy texture. So I'm gonna say no to the bicarb and yes to the good old fashioned plain old water. So here we are, we've done all the testing and you can see by how happy I am about how excited I am about these potatoes. Look at them, they're just so good. I mean, the texture that you get from parboiling, the flavor that you get from the Dutch cream potato, and then that lard, ah, like the flavor, the crispiness, all of it. It's the perfect potato. We did it. Mm. Ah, that never gets old.